everyone. It is Dave Barrington. Hello. To hear what's going on in Burlington. Thank you, Dave. Hey, everybody. Whoa. I don't usually need a microphone. I speak pretty loud. Should I should I try to use this still? Okay. How's that? Is that better? Okay. So I see a lot of uh, friendly faces here. Actually, uh, like Mr. Mr. Hillman here, I'm a work partner at UVM Hospital for close to thirty years. I see the Verchionis, Coach John, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. B. I got my aunt over here, Jackie. <laughs> Uh, Lou Ann, buddy Tim. So it's good to see some friendly faces. You don't usually see too many friendly faces at uh, presentations on City Place. It's usually some uh, protesters involved. But um, yeah, so Linda had reached out, I think it was in the spring, asking uh, if I'd be interested in, in giving uh, an update on uh, what's happening. And I'm always happy to talk about it because I'm... Uh, very excited about it. Very proud of it. And um, this, uh, it's kind of, this building's taken a, a life of its own and uh, it's real, real special to me and um, happy to be able to work on it and, sh and share details about it. Um, so she, uh, Linda had said, uh, we need to title this thing something. And I, I forget what, what the EEE had called it, but I just, I'm calling it city place, Burlington. What's up? Um, so it's got a, it, the whole project's got a really long history. I have not been involved for the entire um, history of it, but I was always a supporter of it coming from Burlington, growing up here, living here, choosing to stay here and, and have business and family and all that. So somewhere along the line, and I think you, you probably got me in trouble with this, Dave, uh, the hospital had agreed to rent a bunch of space from the developer and the developer was Don Sinex and Brookfield Properties or Rouse Properties at the time. And I was doing a bunch of estimating for the hospital. Um, they were, Dave worked in the planning department at the real estate department for um, the hospital. And I was doing estimating on them moving in and we we're working out different floor plans and stuff. And I uh, had an opportunity to meet um, Mr. Sinex and some of the, the folks from Brookfield. And um, we were having pretty regular meetings and um, had a good rapport working with them. And then at one point, um, Sinex had uh, taken somebody's advice for once and said, um, you know, they, somebody said, you ought to get some local people involved. It, it'll help your image a little bit. And and uh, maybe move things a little smoother. Somebody that that might know the mayor or city council and and not wear a suit every day. So uh, he actually he took somebody's advice. He came to myself and my two partners, um, Scott Ireland. Everybody seen the uh, yellow trucks around town with the shamrocks on them. And Omega Electric is Al Senecal. And they were each working on the project already through the demolition and the renovation of the, the mall piece that was getting removed and cut back. And so he asked us, he said, would you guys be interested in, in being um, investors? I'm not going to let you make any decisions, but I'll take your money. And we'll... <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but um, that's how it ended up. <laughs> and... Uh, so we, we jumped right in. We were happy. We thought this is going to be great. We're going to build a building. And then a year went by and another year went by and nothing was happening. And we, we finally um, kind of had a little intervention with them. And we just said, you know, we got in this thing to build it. We got in this thing for Burlington to make it better. And it just doesn't seem like you want to move this along at all. And he said, well, I have a plan. I have a plan. And we said, well, we have a plan. We'd like to buy you out. So. Over the next year, we worked on that deal. Brookfield was leaving, so we it, it was advantageous that we purchased Brookfield's shares, and then we became 50-50 partners with Don. And then when he still had some reluctance to start, and we were all interested in getting started because 
there is a deadline on this project to get it done. Um, it's the city deadline for a, a number of reasons, the bonds and some zoning stuff and all that is the end of 2025. And we knew if we didn't get started, you obviously don't get done. And so we we're all pushing to get started. And um, so we came to terms in the spring of 2022. We closed about a month later. And then we got the whole team back together. The architects, same architects, Freeman, French Freeman, good Burlington firm. Um, all the consulting engineers, the structural guys, the, eng the plumbing engineer, mechanical engineer, got them all back together, said, we're going to just build what got permitted because we don't have time to mess around and go back to planning and zoning and hire another architect or rework the plans. So this project that we're building right now is pretty darn close to what was permitted. We've made a few little changes over the last year, but we figured that was a quickest way to get the project in the ground and, and going. So um, we started almost a year ago. It was no, November 8th or 10th or something. We, uh, we had a little uh, groundbreaking with, with the mayor, some, some city council folks. And that week, Ireland went to work digging a hole and starting to splash concrete around and worked all last winter through spring um, and made some good progress. I've got some, uh, some pictures here. I can skip through this. Uh, so what's shown here is um, this is the south building. Is If you go downtown right now, you'll see the skeleton of this building. It's just standing there. It's 10 stories tall now. Um, all the steel is up. We're starting to frame in some walls. Um, we're pretty much on schedule as, as we want to be here. Um, we've got the foundation for the north building going in, which is um, it's a separate building. It runs up what's going to be the new St. Paul Street, runs all the way down um, Cherry Street, turns a corner down the new Pine Street, and comes towards the back of 100 Bank Street. So it's going to be a U-shaped building. I've got a, a site plan in here I'll share with you. And that foundation's in, and that's about one year behind our timetable for the south building. We expect the steel around July of next summer for that building. Um, let's see. Okay, so um, I know Carol had said, you know, Farrington Construction, we've been here almost 50 years. Ireland, almost the same time frame. I think uh, Stu Ireland started his business in 74. My dad started in 77. And Al from Omega Electric, his grandfather actually had a business up here in the 50s. Um, then they relocated to Massachusetts, and he ended up back here with his family in the 80s. So we've got... Um, those are the three partners we, we got together. We call ourselves City Place Partners. We're not very creative thinking up names. There's the three handsome guys. Whoa. So I'm over on the left-hand side. Al's in the middle, and, and Scott's on the right. Um, all our companies are um, locally owned. We all live live within you know five miles of the job site, actually. And I live, I get to the job site, and five minutes by walking or two, two minutes if I jump on my truck. Uh, and this is another, another fact that I'm pretty proud of is all three companies are now third generation. Like Carol was uh, saying, um, both my kids are in the business. Um, Al's kids are in the business, Pete and Nicole, and, and Scott's two boys are in the business, and his daughter so Sophie are working. Uh, she works in the office. Um, that's something to be proud of, and we, we kind of toot that horn because um, we think it means something, to, um, <clears throat> you know, to the stability and the strength of uh, what we're doing there. Oops, it didn't go. It's not not forwarding. That's it. <laughs> okay, that's not what I got up there, though. Oh, maybe it's just taking some time to, because of the network. Yeah. All right, so I, I went over most of this stuff. Um, whoops. It's just, that's what's happening.
There we go. Gotcha. So, like I said, we 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 had all been uh, friends and work work associates over years. Um, we've always used Ireland for concrete and site work, and I've used Omega Electric a lot on jobs. Um, he went through the kind of the how we got to buying Don out. It's the even longer story. We don't have enough booze in the room or time to, to talk about the whole thing. But we, we got everybody back on board. We got our foundation permit in November, went right to work. We poured our first concrete in December. We worked through the winter, got the foundation all done. Our steel showed up right around the 4th of July of this year. It's now complete. Last, last piece of steel was going up um, this week. 10th floor roof decks all done. We be, began framing the exterior walls um, this month, and we are hoping to get this first building completed by the end of next year, early 2025 at the latest. There we go. So this is a, a aerial view of the, the whole, whole site, a little bit bigger site. Um, You'll see there's some notes in there about what they call phase one, phase two, phase three. But um, this block that we're working on is the yellow in the middle. It was separately subdivided out from what was owned by the Brookfield Group in Synex, which started all the way up on Church Street and went all the way through Macy's. Um, and it's now it's been broken out. Um, where the two dotted yellow lines are going up and down north and south. That, those are the two new roads that used to be there in the six, uh, from 360s on, and um, they got removed during this urban renewal phase. I see Mr. V was here. He's a big, uh, I'm not going to say a fan, uh, it big, he, he's got a lot of knowledge about it. His family grew up in, in that um, part of town, and uh, there's... Um, there's a long history. You could probably spend weeks just talking about that. But um, this whole area was back in from the 1870s to the 1960s was um, a neighborhood, family neighborhood. A lot of uh, uh, immigrants had settled in this area, Italians, Lebanese, French. Um, there were churches around. And um, so there was a lot of controversy back in the early 70s when this whole thing went down. When it got plowed down, people were relocated, dislocated to uh, places they may not want to be. Um, actually, my cousin, Patrick Farrington, did a great video, and I think it's called, uh, what's it called? Camp Lane, Urban Renewal, sorry, something like that. Yeah, you can, if you type in Urban Renewal in Champlain Street on uh, YouTube, it'll go to his, his video. It's about 40 40 minutes long, but he did a great job on exploring all the all the um, the issues that went on there. But um, so you fast forward, they built this big, huge mall. They built the Macy's. They built the they tore down Jupiter's and built this mall where uh, most recently was a Starbucks and a Five Dog Five Five Guys restaurant on Church Street. Um, wiped out all these different blocks and, and built this big thing, but the roads disappeared. And there was always uh, a lot of discussion about why did the city give away these roads? And a lot of people saying, we want those roads back. We want those roads back. So at some point, just when we got involved in the project, the city sued us. I think the second day that I was a partner in the project, we got a lawsuit against us from the city. I said, oh, thanks, Moreau. Uh, and the way our partner was, he wanted to fight tooth and nail, wanted to go to court, he wanted to lawyer up and go get the highest price, you know, New York City attorneys and beat the crap out of the man. And we said, let's not do that. Let's sit down and talk. So I pushed for mediation, which he finally said, yeah, I guess that's the only way this is going to work. Uh, and we, we came up with a settlement plan. And one of the parts of the settlement plan was to give the land back to the city for these roads. Don had always wanted to sell it to them or, or own it, get some tax deduct and lease it back. It was always kind of complicated to wait around things. I always thought it was a simpler way to do things. 
give them the land. They want the land, we'll give it back to them. And then, so the lawsuit disappeared, we settled. So now we're responsible for building two new roads, uh, tying back in from Bank Street up to Cherry, what was there back in the, the 60s and the 40s. So that, that piece of the project is going to happen. It's uh, being funded partially by the city, partially by us. Um, and the completion on that is when our project's done. So at the end of 2025, we have to open those two roads back up to the public. No, they're, they're at street level. There's one little piece which is over in uh, this corner of this building that's still there. If you drive up Pine Street, you see this building. You end in Pine Street right here. You used to drive under it to go into the mall parking. Now it's, it's going to shift over, and you're going to drive under the building, but you're going to stay above grade, and then you're going to continue through and come up alongside the Macy's building. What's left of Macy's now, which uh, the Burlington High School is in there temporarily. But it, that road's going to get reestablished. But when they built that 100 Bank Street building, the ground for the building, um, it was pushed into the, what was the old road. So there's a, a funky little turn that's going to happen underneath there, but it's going to be all above, above grade. And St. Paul Street's going to run right through. It's off center a little bit. So there's a kick in it. There's going to be a slight little turn in St. Paul Street that'll bring you up. It won't continue to purl because the city built the bus station on St. Paul Street between Pearl and uh, Cherry. So that that yellow is what we're building. You can kind of see the upside down U shape. Uh, this is the north building up here, and this is the building that we're building right now. And there's. St. Paul, and there's uh, Pine, and within this, think of this as like a bagel or a donut. Inside the donut hole is a three-story parking garage that will, there's going to be one layer underground, one layer at the street level, and as you pull in, you'll be able to take a ramp up and park at the top level. Then it's going to be covered, it's got a green roof, it's green roof, they call it, it's got plants on it, and, uh, and then we we recapture all the storm water, store it in the tank. Uh, so it, it's not just like a big massive roof that's going to flood, flood all the streets. So that's this, the south building that's under construction right now. Um, it was designed for retail level. All the buildings all the way around the block have retail presence um, at the street level. Second floor. Is commercial space and then residential above. Uh, there's right now there's 14 apartments per floor. And then you get to the ninth, tenth floor, uh, changes up a little bit. They're a little bit larger units. There's still some studios, small, smaller, but three or four that are larger. Uh, one of the recent changes that we made in zoning was uh, added balcony in front of the building. We had had them help out, um, make the units a little nicer, um, let people get a little outside space. So this is this is like looking at this from the Henry side, a city corner across the street. It doesn't show the the old thing. Code, we have to buy 20 percent to be affordable. All whatever 20 percent has to be mixed in. So this is the north building. This is like looking at it from the bus station. People recognize the bell tower from Caesar Church. That's right on the corner of what was St. Paul. Scary. This is looking kitty corner. Can't be the same. We 
tail level all the way around. We are still partners with Don in that that building, the L.L. Bean building, and the Macy's building. But he has not um, shown any signs of shaking himself loose from that one yet. He's still chewing that bone pretty good. Um, but we we don't have uh, any plans right now for that building. So I think we, we went over this a little bit. Uh, this, this whole area was part of a much larger thing called urban renewal. It was densely settled. There was a lot of uh, multifamily apartment houses there. There was a lot of uh, small shops and businesses. It, it was a neighborhood. It was like a you know, thriving little neighborhood. Um, the urban renewal was very controversial. Um, it got pushed, it pushed through. Um, Somebody had it in their mind it was going to happen, and it happened. So um, where we're building right now, uh, St. Paul's Cathedral was on our site. So that actually wasn't part of the urban renewal. Obviously, they weren't going to tear a church down. So St. Paul's Cathedral and the, the Catholic Church uh, Cathedral were both going to stay. Um, and then as soon as urban renewal was kind of near its end, St. Paul's burnt. I think that was in 71. Did I say that in there? Um, yeah, so St. Paul's burnt, and there was this elaborate dance with the developers back then in the 60s or 70s in St. Paul's, and they ended up trading some land that the developers had gotten from the city, and that's where the new St. Paul's ended up over on Battery and, and Pearl. And it freed up this last little corner, which was the... St. Paul's Cathedral, and then the, the Bishop's House was behind it, right where that 100 Bank Street building is. The Bishop's House was right on the corner of uh, Pine and Ch uh, Bank Street. And that building wasn't damaged, but when St. Paul's sold their land to the developers, they tore that house down. Uh, and if any of you do uh, Facebook, there's a really good page on Facebook. It's done by Bob Blanchard. I think it's called Burlington History or Burlington Memories. You type in Bob Blanchard uh, in Burlington, and um, he's got great pictures of all the old neighborhoods and all the old buildings. And we're actually working with him. He's going to uh, help us curate some plaques when we get done the, all the buildings around with um, pictures and a little paragraph about what was here. So as you're walking down, say, Cherry Street, when you get to what was, I don't know what the number would have been, 97 Cherry, there was a house there. There's, we've got a picture of the house, and then there's going to be a little plaque that says, you know, Joe and Sally lived here, da 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 and there was a store, and there was a, was the funeral home on that block, Mr. V? Reedy's, Reedy's funeral home, there's, there's a, so Cherry Street was way more developed than Bank Street at the time because the church owned the, all the land along Bank Street. So they had their cathedral, then they had a big backyard, and then they had the bishop's house. So that was not developed as much as the, the other side street. Um, so like I said, in the 70s, this Burlington Square Mall got built. It was originally underground with parking on top, and then it expanded in the early 80s, I think, and they added a second level, and then they added a little, uh, there was a department store along... Uh, Bank Street, then Macy's got built, I think, in 1999, 97, 98, something like that. So I kind of filled that whole area in. Um, and then between 2016, when this project was envisioned, through 2018, that's when Brookfield and Sinex tore it all down. And then it sat from 2018 to 2022 when, uh, when we started back up. 
I don't. It's a big secret. Nobody's, there, something's happening, but nobody's saying. And there must be some real, if I don't know, it's a secret. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening with the Catholic uh, cathedral? And nobody knows. Some people know, but I, I'm sure they had to sign some wicked non-disclosure. Even the city. I mean, nobody says a word about it. There, there's a bunch of lawsuits with that, but yeah, lawsuits. Um, so I've already talked about what's getting built, but originally the Sinex Brookfield plan called for a 14-story building. This will lead into some lawsuits right here. 14, 14 stories. There was only going to be 150. Uh, residential units because that was a limit that Act 250 puts on certain projects. Um, the hospital was going to take a good chunk of the space. Uh, they were going to have office space, move everybody that isn't taking care of patients up at the hospital, get them out, out of the hospital so they could have more, more space up there. Um, there was going to be two distinct buildings, each with office towers rising up. Um, there was a lot of public opposition, lawsuits, Lots of conflict. Um, Brookfield kind of called a timeout. They, they, they weren't happy with the progress. They weren't happy with the team they had on it. They weren't happy with their partner. Um, so they just said, we're going to put this on ice for a little while. And then soon after that, I think there was a lot of pressure from the city on Brookfield. And even though the city didn't want to see more of Don Sinek's, they wanted to see something happen. So they encouraged him to try to take, take over the project from Brookfield to keep it moving. Um, like I said, we're building pretty much what was permitted back in 2020. It's uh, about 730,000 square feet of mixed use, which is retail, commercial space, restaurants, shops. Um, there's 40,000 square feet of that all the way around the block. Uh, we've got 420 something parking spaces in a three story enclosed garage. We've got a community room. Um, it's part of the, what we negotiated with the city. There's a 2,000 square foot, maybe, maybe the size of this room or a little smaller, um, in the back that's got like a catering kitchen and like neighborhood planning associations and citizens groups and stuff can schedule access to that room to have meetings such as this. I think that gets scheduled through the CETO office. So we'll have some cooperation It's uh, w one floor up. It's, it's in where we have, we, right now we're calling it like the lawyer's offices. That's who we're hoping to attract. Um, there's, there's four large office suites on the second floor of the, the south building. And then on the, on the west side is where the community room is. And it can be split up. It's got dividers, so it can be split up into smaller rooms. Yeah, well, there's four of them. Um, so the community room's there, um, and then also as part of our negotiations with the city, whoops, um, we agreed to provide some public restrooms around at, at the street level. So as you go into each garage, do the share screen again. Help, Bella. Okay. Yeah, so I think there's four public restrooms, like almost one on each block that um, people can, can just go into. Yeah, a recent, so. The, the original design, some of the changes that we made, the original design had a ninth floor restaurant, about 6,000 square feet of uh, restaurant space, event space, and a big outdoor patio. And I talked to about 50 restaurant people and nobody wanted to have anything to do with it. It's just too big. You know, the fit up cost would have been three to four million dollars. To staff it, somebody would have needed 40 or 50 people and just nobody wanted to touch it. And um, so we went back to zoning and 
we had this restaurant and then we had mechanical penthouse space on the roof and we didn't need any of that because we weren't having boilers and all these air handlers because each unit has its own heating and cooling systems. Um, so I went back to zoning and said, how about if we build more housing? And they said, great. So we, we've converted the ninth floor to just be one more floor of the apartments and then the 10th floor has, um, it's open floor plan right now. We don't even have it designed. It's like if somebody wants to come in and sit down and talk, we'll, we'll do like a design build project for them. And, um, we've had a lot of interest from, from outside people. Um, this uh, little funny twist. When this was originally built, this or designed, this building was designed as a hotel. When he found out, Don found out he'd have to get an Act 250 permit, he wanted to avoid any more public hearings because he was <laughs> a little shy of them. So he just, I think the fight was coming out of him a little bit. Not, not all of it, but so he decided, no, we're not going to build the hotel, and it got converted to apartments. Since then, there's been some changes in Act 250 and a little change in ownership that they said we could consider doing like a boutique hotel in the building. So we are talking to some people about that. And that would be at some mid-level point, there'd be uh, a, a series of floors that would be um, hotel room. They're, they're talking, there's talk about some people wanting some, what they call extended stay, where you come for a month. And so it's, it's kind of like apartments, but so we're, we're, um, we're still exploring a lot with uh, future or p potential partners. Yes, sir. Will the residential apartments have dedicated indoor parking? In other words, if you run an apartment, you get a guaranteed garage space. Um, no. The city disallowed that. The city, so here's another funny little twist. We, we were going to build 550 parking spaces for 420 apartments. Figured that's what we needed. The city put a cap on the number of parking spaces that we could build, and we had to take a floor off the parking garage. We had to, we had to take 150 parking spaces away because they're now controlling how many parking spaces you can build. Because they don't want parking. They don't want people driving cars. We're gonna go back to horse and buggies. <laughs> it, it is, it's gonna, but you know, their vision, and that's what this whole plan BTV was about, was people downtown living and working. We just gotta, you know, it's the, it's, the, it's the chicken and egg thing. We get people living downtown, but then they need jobs down there, so you need businesses down there, so you gotta build some more buildings. So we're, we're doing our part on the first part. So I don't know if we're the chicken or the egg, but. Um, We've had a, a lot of interest from local businesses. Um, we've got a bank, a bank that's interested on um, being on Bank Street. Um, we've had a interest in a micro grocery store, this boutique hotel, like I mentioned, uh, a bunch of smaller restaurants like uh, breakfast shops or hamburger joints like that, um, and like a walk-in healthcare clinic, small, like a Concentra type. We haven't signed any leases yet. Um, you'll see some pictures, you'll see why. We still have a dirt floor all through the, the ground floor. <laughs> yeah, so here's, here's an old picture. I, I pulled some pictures off. Um, this is like a 1960s shot of the block. So we've got, um, this is St. Paul Street. This is Bank Street. This is the old Episcopal Cathedral and that was the governor or the um, bishop's house. Mr. V, was that the school right there? Uh, yeah, it was during the school. C Converse School. Converse. Yeah. So there was a school. There was a office building. I'm not sure what this was here. I, I don't. I don't have the the information on what's what was along there, but. Um, Behind this is, was a big parking lot that was behind the old Woolworth store. There was a Sears Auto across the street. Uh, the Catholic grounds were right across the street, directly across.
This was something I, I pulled from this, uh, one of the city websites. So this, this is the urban renewal zone. It, it stretched down to Battery Street, over to Pearl, down to College. Um, so this, this is the property. This is our full block right here, but this was the church property that they left out of the urban renewal. And here's, here was the, this was uh, Cathedral High School, and this is, was the old cathedral. Um, I forget what that was called. And then over here was the Cathedral Grammar School, almost right across the street from. It's exact, it was right on that corner, yep. So that, that's about what the site looked a, a year ago when we started. We've got a little bit of digging going on. You can see we were, again, this, this, this is from the roof of the Yellow Bean Building. So here's uh, Cherry Street. This is Bank Street running this way. The new pine's going to snake underneath this building and pop right back up here. So that was the whole site. The, the old parking garage used to be right here all along Cherry Street and, and under. And then this was the mall piece that was through here and tied into the Macy's, which is, is still over here. So the, our south building is in this area here. And this, is, this was the very beginning. This was the deepest concrete that we had to pour and that's where the elevators and the stair towers are all stacked up. And, um, you, and that's also the lowest level where you come down to the elevators. You'll be one story below grade where the parking comes in. And that was last night. <laughs> so we've, uh, we've had a fun year there. Um, no. We've, we've been leaving the lights on because we had some trespassers. So a couple of artists. Um, the insurance company wants us to leave the lights on. They're all LED lights, so they don't really burn a lot of juice. But um, it looks pretty cool at night because I, I was coming up down Pine Street at night. And you're like, wow. It, it jumps up. It's, um, it's about 30 feet taller than the building next door and about... 50 feet taller than the new building that just got built in the Chittenden Bank driving uh, parking lot area. Mrs. V? I think you're really lucky that you keep this place safe if I knew, I'd run for mayor and make it happen. But there's, there's drug problems, mental health problems. Those are combined. This homeless thing is another, you know, that's a, a result of the first two problems. You know, we don't have a lot of police right now. That got cut back. They're trying to build it back up. They knew that was a mistake. Hopefully, they get back up. Yes, sir. Uh, we will have a, a night watchman here once we get a little further along. But not more than that. In other words, like in the elevators and the hallways and the parking garages and those kinds of places. Oh, I, I think there will probably be like a concierge guy at the lobby um, kind of stopping. You don't come in the building if you don't need to be in the building. You know, there's a lot of uh, potential tenants have asked that question. Everything's going to be secured from the lobby level up. You'll need a card or a um, fob to, to get in. If you come in through the parking garage to get down to the lower level, you're going to need to swipe a card, and a garage door will open up, and you'll drive down, and then you'll need a card to get into the building. Then you're going to need a card to get into the elevator. And once you get out of the elevator, there's two more sets of doors, and you can't leave the elevator lobby at your floor. You swipe again. <laughs> so don't lose your card. Okay. Or you'll be sleeping in your car. So if, if you have a question, please raise your hand because we'd love to have people here. Okay. Mr. V. Uh, He's a coach. He knows how to holler. Somebody could walk in right after they finish. Is that correct? Could you repeat the question?
he has just spoke about uh, elevators and cards to get in. And my question is, uh, it probably goes along with the idea of security. If somebody opens up the elevator, who's to stop somebody who quickly gets in right behind them? That's my question. Um, that's a good question. I think that could happen. But then when you get to your floor, you probably know your neighbors. There's only 12 more people that live on, on your floor. And you'd say, you're not going any further. I, I would say that. It's, uh, it, 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 it may not be the, the yeah, no, no, but we're, we're trying to take some measures to, to promote security. You could walk into my living room right now if my front door is open. So, <laughs> um, it's a different world now, definitely, and, and security is a big thing. All the stairwells, like you can't get into the garage, then get into a stairwell and get out on somebody's floor. You, you need a, a swipe card. Um, and there's, there's going to be cameras and there's going to be people around. Yeah. I, I, I believe part of the plan was to have been a um, higher up, maybe rooftop observation deck open to the public, but I didn't hear you mention that. No. Nope. Um, that we traded that for these public bathrooms and stuff. Our insurance company was dead set against having an open public observation deck. And they said they would not insure the building if that was there. So. I have a question um, concerning, we were talking about safety and you said that there were going to be public restrooms with street access. Yep. Um, I, I'm aware there are a lot of drugs in downtown Burlington these days, and I'm wondering how safe those will be. That's a, a, a good question. They'll, I, we can't put cameras in them. So um, there's a public bathroom in City Hall Park, and I've seen 10 feet in it before. Five, five pairs of shoes in one bathroom. So. Stuff, stuff is going to happen. If it gets out of control, we'll, we'll shut them down and tell the city it's not working out for us. What are the restrooms in the park? Uh, there's a shower and a toilet there. But they're, they're on elevated legs. And like I said, if you're sitting at the, the Merchants Bank in the drive through you can look out and you're like, there's five people in that one bathroom right now. What's going on? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, the parking garage, I, I'm not quite sure. Is this for the public or the tenants of the uh, residential building, or is, is it going to be mixed? It's going to be mixed use. We're going to have um, two floors secured. That you, If you drive in, there's going to be a gate that you have to open up. You'll have an uh, opener in your car. That gate will open up, and you'll drive down, and the gate will close. But the level at the street level will have those pay kiosks where you can go and punch in your uh, license plate number and you get a ticket and you put it on your windshield and that level will be enforced. There's an enforcement team that goes through to make sure you're, you're, you have the tickets and you're paying and they're taking care of security and picking up garbage and so the, and that's the largest floor. There's, uh, what is there, 140 cars on that, I think. So we, we anticipate that they'll be full most of the time, but there will be public parking available. There'll be a light outside, like the city has at their, is it their Bank Street garage. It says lot full or, or lot uh, spaces available or something like that. And that's all done just by monitoring cars in and out. Um, We're not sure. If, oh, yes. It sounds like it's on. Um, this is a broad question, and, and, and I'm, I'm curious, if in the current plans, are there any kind of major uh, conditions or contingencies that, that could happen and gum up the works so that some of these players would, 
you know, retrench or withdraw from participation and going further? Is there something that could mess it up? Uh, I, I've known of, of major projects, just from reading, or a little bit of information otherwise, th about, for example, in the whole uh, doing of the Shelburne Inn from the family, to, 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 there, there were critical points where the deadlines had to be made or the players would have had to go back to the table and try to secure uh, agreement and, and go on or not go on as, as had been planned up to that point. It was also true in more recently in Lincoln Center in the revision of Avery Fisher Hall. To, they had to have a certain amount of money, certain kinds of funding secure or, or things could, could you know, hit the fan. Yep. So I wonder if that, if, if you understand the gist of my question, is, no, is, I, I is that the yep. case now? Um, there's no, no conditions on the construction of this. There is a uh, condition that the city has as part of the road construction that we had to enter into a contract for a minimum $50 million worth of construction. And we met that already with this building. This is about a $70 million building. So we've, we've met that kind of threshold that frees up the, what they call the TIF money that pays for the roads. Um, we do have a, a deadline at the end of the project, which is right now December 31st, 2025, that we have to have the roads completed and our project done. If our project isn't 100% complete, we still have to pay property taxes as if it were complete. So if we run six months late or a year late, we got to pay the property tax bill as if it was done. So there's a little incentive there to, to get done. <laughs> uh, well, a couple of things. Um, Hi, Kathy. Hey. <laughs> Good to see you again after Kathy, all these uh, years. Uh, anyway, I just really want to express my gratitude I don't know if people can hear me. But, um, for for you, you and Dave uh, taking on the leadership for this project and um, persevering through all the ups and downs and the what ifs, which we're always going to continue to do that. But I think that I can probably turn it off. Just to express. Quiet down, right, Kathy? Um, just want to express my gratitude, and I think as a long-time Burlington resident, that I really see this as the major step in the renaissance of Burlington, and um, and I kudos to you and your your team and the other two companies and Dave here, and um, and I'm wondering, um, back on the job is now. there <laughs> <laughs> bring him in for anything, right? Um, is there any estimate or guesstimate of what the approximate rents might be for the apartments here? They're going to be. It's going to be mixed rents all the way down to what they. There's a this the IZ component um, has some federal factors that you have to meet, and it's like 65% of some posted rate that the maximum rent can be of their of the person that's living in their income. So it's like. Um, I, I don't know how that whole formula works. I've got people at the, the office that figure that stuff out. But uh, it gets some of those rents of the affordable IZ units, inclusionary zoning units, down to, it's around 1000 like $1,080 a month, which still sounds like a lot for a you know, one-bedroom apartment. But that's, that's like the lower side. And then um, we are going to include... Uh, we have just recently made this decision. We want to include some student housing in there, but just owned by us, not leased to UVM or Champlain. It's just going to be managed by us. We're going to build the suite type. So there might be, I think the number was like 44 suites. So there might be 160 kids living in one wing. Um, and and that will be managed like a, a student dorm, basically. We're going to build some workforce housing that's doesn't reach as deep as the affordable that the IZ requires, but still affordable to the working person. And then as we move up the, the levels, obviously they're going to get a little nicer and a little more expensive, and there are going to be some, some premium units, like the, 
the ninth and 10th floor of this building. It's got some amazing views. You can imagine down to Shelburne Point and out Juniper Island. You can see North Beach. You can see over to Plattsburgh. Um, so it's, it's truly, it's going to be mixed, right? Right from the you know, lower income. Um, we are talking right now. We're, we're not terribly excited about the discussions, but we are talking with the mayor's office about um, setting aside a few that maybe like CHT might manage as, um, I, I forget the exact term, it's um, coordinated entry. So it's, it's homeless people or just previously homeless people, maybe people um, you know, coming out of a temporary shelter like a COTS or something like that. And this is the first step to getting them into, into a home and they get other support services from the city. Howard Center helps out, uh, CHT. So it's a di different concept, like just poof, open up the door to some homeless people. It's, it's not that bad, but um, we're, so we're exploring that and we're open for it. You know, we wanna, we wanna do our part. Um, this project's actually got the higher level of inclusionary. We, we went to 20% inclusionary um, and that was something actually that Don offered up in the beginning. I don't know why he did that because he really only had to do 15%. So it's really contrary to him to go more, but he did. Do you know why he did that? Yeah, it's not anymore. No, we're just mixing it in like inclusionary. Yeah. Uh, Dave Hillman had asked about if it was going to be segregated, affordable or not, and we're just we're mixing it in to the um, the mix. It's so truly inclusionary. It's uh, some people have been a uh, developer out in North Avenue sold off all his affordable responsibilities to I think it was Cathedral Square or CHT, and they built two different towers just for that and then did market rate in standalone buildings. But ours is gonna be mixed in, so you won't know who's there. You won't know that you're paying $1,100 and you're paying $1,400 for the same place. It's, uh, it's the true spirit of inclusionary, the, the zoning. It's called IZ, inclusionary zoning. So it's just everybody lives together and some people get some help. She got another question. Um, oh. So um, I went to a lot of the meetings with some. I've of seen you there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and everything was so adversarial. I mean, I was, it was so upsetting. And so I'm amazed that you're getting through quite so easily. Is oh, not true? adversarial. <laughs> I know. Is that all it takes or could have taken? I mean, I'm amazed it was so complicated. <laughs> oh, it's not on. Yep. It was complicated, it was extremely adversarial, but it was his own making. And that's just his style, and it didn't work. And uh, we, we, we knew that, and that's why we pushed to get this piece broken away and, and get it done. So. Um, what is the front on Church Street going to look like? Um, I don't know the final plans for that, but it's not going to change much because you can't build on Church Street. You have to, anything, that, any new construction that's going to happen there has to be at least 65 feet back from Church Street. So you can't go build a 10-story building on Church Street. So whatever the plans are, they've taken that, in, the zoning has taken that into consideration. So it'll be pushed back. Um, and there's, there's been a lot of discussion about what it would be, another residential tower. Uh, Cynics had talked about a hotel. There, there's been talk about um, some business offices. There's been talk about more of a convention type meeting space um, for conventions, events that could hold more than, like the biggest place around town now is uh, the Radisson or it's now the Hilton. And I think they can put about 450 people in there and there's a need to have a place that somebody can set a thousand people down. So that, that might be part of the mix, but that, nothing's settled yet, and I don't think anything's been applied for. But um, there will be no direct access from Church Street to your buildings. They're not connected. They're not connected, no. no. So you have to go down the, 
either Cherry Street or... Well, I saw one plan where you'd walk into Church Street, where you do now in between the, the coffee shop and the burger place, and there was a promenade with small shops along each side, and it would end at St. Paul Street, and then you'd go across the street. But I don't, I don't think that's been settled out yet. Okay. Mr. V. Uh, I want to personally thank you and your company for getting involved. Uh, it's over 50 years that uh, urban renewal took place, uh, forcing people to leave their homes because there was going to be a big project following. Here we are 50 years later waiting for the first uh, occupants to be even considered. Uh, that area had businesses, houses, schools, everything that made a community. And so that's why the people who were, how would I say, <laughs> displaced, <laughs> it really left a, a, a very poor taste in their mouth. Oh, I know. And uh, the frustration of those people. And to my interpretation, the city did not give the occupants what their house was worth. All they did was, uh, all they did was the property and not the land. You know, when you sell your house, you're selling the land. Yeah. Um, that's where financially it was held. Dave, thank you so, so much. Hey. This has been fabulous. Yes. How's that one, huh? <laughs> yeah, so if anybody's got questions, I got a pretty easy email. It's Dave at BTV, like the airport, btvspaces.com. My, that uh, 800 number that's on the sign on the fence actually rings to my cell phone. So I've gotten quite a few calls. And uh, the info at buildingcityplace.com forwards to my email also. So if anybody's got questions, Comments, whatever. If you want to come down and take a look, just give me a shout. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming today. <laughs>